Hey everybody, welcome to this great Photoshop CS6 tutorial on how to improve the performance of Photoshop on your computer. I'm your host, Buddy Blackford, and uh, let's get started. <clears throat> so, we're going to come up here into the preferences. So, let's go to Edit and then Preferences, and then we'll come down to uh, Performance. And this is where we can start um, assigning different like performance tasks. So the first thing I want to go over with you is this uh, scratch disks down here. Now, when uh, Photoshop is working on something with a lot of uh, stuff it needs to process, it will use your RAM first. But after the RAM runs out, then it'll use these uh, scratch disks to um, use the uh, to uh, distribute the workload and perform an operation. So it'll use uh, free space on your on any available drive. So any of the available drives you have are called scratch disks that um, that they will use. So it's best to, to uh, divide the workload. So I'm going to go ahead and check my external hard drive here and use that as a scratch disk. By assigning multiple scratch disk drives you increase Photoshop's overall performance. The next section I want to go over is this memory usage section here. And uh, the more RAM you allocate to Photoshop, the more efficiently it's going to run. And for a basic guideline, Photoshop is going to require about five or six times the uh, working size uh, of five or six times the amount of RAM of the working size of your document and working size of a document is when you have all the layers in there and you keep on adding more layers once you add another layer it's going to increase the size of your document and that's the working size so it's good to have um, as much RAM as you can allocate and but make sure you leave a little bit for other programs if you're using like two programs at once like if you're going to use like After Effects and Photoshop at the same time, then you may want to lower the allocation of or lower the available RAM for Photoshop and up up the available RAM for After Effects. Depends on how you're using it. So if you're using Photoshop alone, um, leave at least two gigs of RAM for the uh, like outside programs. So I'm going to up this here to almost 12 gigs because I have 14.6 meg of uh, 14.6 gigabytes available so I'm gonna go to 82 uh, percent here and uh, that's gonna be good for me on the memory usage here now we've got our history and cache here um, there are presets here for documents that are certain sizes so like a tall and thin document and like something that's tall like really tall and not very wide then you got like default and then you got something that's big and flat which is like I don't know like if you're working on like a billboard or something like that so that's what that is your history states are the amount of uh, undos you can have you can have up to a thousand undos um, but I mean no one would ever really need that so you don't have to worry about going to a thousand I, I would hope but when you increase the number of history states or undos it increases the amount of RAM Photoshop uses to manage your history so if you lower that the amount of history states then it'll increase the performance you have but you have to sacrifice the amount of undos you can make so that's a it's like a um, I can't remember the term but it's like a either like a win-lose kind of thing I guess so you gotta manage that the way that you work on your own if you make a lot of mistakes you might want to increase the history states so that's up to you so the uh, cache levels here are screen redraws and if you hover over top of like the cache levels here down at the bottom of the preferences there's a description and I'll read it to you real quick um, number of cache levels of I image data used to improve screen redraw and histogram speed choose more cache level for bigger documents with few layers 
Choose fewer cache levels for smaller documents with many layers. Changes will take effect the next time you start Photoshop. So, um, when you're working on large documents, more cache levels help you speed up the function and make image manipulation uh, proceed faster. Um, but they are in, they work within your RAM. So the more cache levels you choose, the less RAM that you'll have available for other Photoshop functions. So um, pretty much use that kind of like, it's kind of like the uh, trade-off with the history states. So depends on what uh, you're working on, you can change that for each um, like project that you're working on. Now we've got the cache tile size. And that's the amount of data Photoshop stores or processes at once. So use a large tile size for large documents to speed up processing. Um, if you're not sure what to use, just use one of these buttons up here. So default is good. Um, and then you've got uh, up to 1,028K. So that's what I uh, use just to, uh, um, it says set cache levels to two or higher for optimum GPU performance. It'll it'll give you a little information bar there if you, for uh, for use based upon your graphics card and stuff like that. We've got our graphics processor settings here. Um, it'll tell you what graphics card you have here, and then you can use the graphics uh, processor here for um, helping like speed things up, which is uh, pretty nice. And if we go into the advanced settings. We've got our uh, drawing mode here. We can check to use the uh, um, graphics processor to accelerate computation. So if you have a good gra graphics card, it can help out a lot. Even even like not even a good graphics card can help out too. OpenCL and anti-alias, you want to ha have those checked to get the most out of like your graphics card. And um, when you have this on advanced, it uses your graphics card to the fullest extent it can. Normal is like in the middle and basic is like the least amount. So um, it says if this mode seems to perform less smoothly, try switching to normal or basic mode. So if you're getting like your Photoshop is like freezing up or anything like that, lower, lower this down to a different, to like normal. So that's uh, it for uh, increasing your performance in Photoshop. Uh, I hope you guys learned how to uh, use this correctly and start like making some really cool stuff in Photoshop really quickly now. So I'll see you guys later in the next tutorial. Thumbs up if you like this and subscribe if you want to see more Photoshop, or Photoshop CS6 tutorials in the future. Thanks a lot everyone and have a good day.